Hello, my name is Cheryl Peralt and I am host of Meet Your Neighbor. Today we are in the home of Ginny Holden, longtime Hopkinton resident who has a few stories and words to share with us. Well, how many years of your life you spent in Hopkinton when you moved here? I moved here in uh, 42, mm -hmm. uh, June 42. And how old were you then? I was uh, 15, mm -hmm. long time ago. <laughs> and where did you live before In then? Newton, Mass. Newton, Mass, yep. Can you tell a little about your family growing up and one thing you remember about each member? Uh, there was four of us, and there was three girls and one boy, and I was a baby girl. And uh, it was during the Depression, as I said before, and it was... Um, it, we didn't realize, you know, times were so hard, really. We just, well, we were with everyone else. Everyone else had the same problems. Can you tell a little about your mother and father growing up? Uh, well, they, he was a sergeant, staff sergeant in the World War II, and they, I think she sneaked up the library and wrote her name in a book. And I think that's how, really how they met. I think he, he wrote to her and she wrote back, and then they, Continued, you know, after he got, after he got out of the service, and he, I think he worked up here, you know, and they finally got engaged and got married. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's how you came to be. Yes, <laughs> I think so. So <laughs> when you were growing up in Newton, what did you and your brothers and sisters and the kids in the neighborhood, what did you do for fun and pastime? Well, we played. We only had one bicycle between us and. <laughs> We we went out after dark and played games. That was our big, big thing. And then I can remember my dad was up on the porch and he was calling for us to come in when it got really dark, and that was the end of it, you know. But we yeah, no, that's what we did mainly play games. What kind of games? Oh, run sheep run and ring a levo and uh, stoplight. Uh, I can't I can't even remember them to tell you the truth. But we we kept busy, you know. There was a lot of children and we had a wonderful time. That was our entertainment. We had no TV. I mean, we had a radio, but we didn't stay in and listen to that. <laughs> Did you have many toys? Oh yeah, yeah. We, uh, we, you know, we always had what everybody else had, more or less. You know, we, I mean, but a lot of the toys were never invented either. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, I always had dolls and a crib, and uh, I, oh, we had to play a piano that we loved. My sister could only vamp, you know, she couldn't play, really play. And we used to sing, we used to read the old songs from World War I. <laughs> and um, yeah, we had good fun with that play a piano. It was wonderful. Uh, we go on to Girl Scouts and uh, well, I guess that was about all. We went to church, you know, a lot. <laughs> Do you remember one of the songs from World War I? You could oh gosh! Um, sing a few lines. I was just thinking of one the other day. Uh, I think they sang. I didn't. I didn't raise my boy to be a soldier. I brought him up to be my pride and joy. And uh, oh, there was there was quite a few of them. I can't remember them. There's another one that I know was from World War One. <laughs> well, the piano was old to start with, you know. But. We, you know, we used to sing. My sister used to play the guitar, and we used to sing guitar songs. As a family? No, no, just just us, mm -hmm. you know. The kids. Yeah, just mm -hmm. the kids. Yeah, not my brother, but my sisters and I, the three of us. Yeah, there was one one called Cowboy Jack. Probably no one ever. But they were real cowboy songs then, you know. The cowboy programs aren't, aren't really cowboy <laughs> programs mm -hmm. as I, as I remember them, you know. Uh, yeah, we used to have fun like that, you know. So from what you remember, growing up in the Depression, in your eyes as a child back then, how did the Depression affect you and your family and the community? Well, I mean, it, things were harder to get in general, you know, and um, we, we probably did without things. We, But, you know, it was no big deal because everybody was in the same boat, you know. It, it, it didn't it didn't depress the children at all, you know. <laughs> they had to depress. Okay. And then you were a teenager. Oh, then I was a teenager. You moved to Hopkinton. Yes, I moved to Hopkinton, yes. Years. And I was a junior in high school. And um, the school was just up the street from me, so it was very, very handy. <laughs> and a lot of the people had gone to war. 
you know, there was only 12 in my class. And um, I remember, one thing I remember, there was an a apple orchard down off of um, Ash Street, and the man couldn't find people to pick apples, so they used to let us out early. And we used to go down there and pick apples for him. I remember that. But Hopkinton, I mean, I had a lot of fun with my friends going skating in the winter and sliding. We used to go from uh, where the, where the uh, lum lumber yard is, lumber store, all the way down to almost down, well, as far as like we could go, not quite to the pond, but on the streets. I mean, you know, we didn't have any trouble. There weren't that many cars. Mm -hmm. And then, um, well, they had, a, they had a skating rink up at uh, the uh, building at the top of the hill. They had, I mean, they had things, they really did, you know. But, you know, it was certainly a lot smaller. I remember you said they had a way of separating the boys and girls. Oh, yes, at the high school they had two doors, and one was for the boys and one for the girls, but I lived nearest the girls' door. I mean, near the boys' door, and I said, well, I'm not walking all around the school, so I, cause I snuck in that door. I oh, changed wow. the tradition, I guess, I don't know. You were a door rebel. Yeah, I was, I was. <laughs> Oh, gosh. Uh, you had also mentioned that participation in church was a big part of your life growing up. Yes, it was. When we, when we were in Newton, I went to a Methodist church, and um, there was a prayer meeting on Friday, and there was plays, there was suppers, there were, there were uh, um, fairs, and um, they had a young people's group, and... It was very active, you know, it really was, yeah. We and were, we always, when my grandparents had a pew, so we always sat in their pew on Sunday. <laughs> and, and then when I moved to Hopkinton, it was the first time I ever went to a movie on Sunday. We didn't do that. <laughs> Did you participate in the um, church uh, culture in Hopkinton as well? Well, I, I went, there, was a, there wasn't a, a real, just Methodist church, so I went to a, a combined church up the top of the hill. Mm -hmm. So we, we just, you know, went there. It was, it was a little different, but, mm -hmm. you know, kids, so like the same thing. <laughs> kids and teenagers, uh, yes, a yeah. lot of their social, social time was spent in church. Yes, yeah, 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 we did. We belonged to a lot of the, uh, the groups, you know. And I remember you told me about uh, taking care of some of the soldiers. Uh, yes, yes. During the war, they, 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 there was an uh, army place in Framingham, Cushing Hospital, at uh, Cushing. And um, so they sent soldiers out there on Sunday, and they went to church. And then uh, some of the church people took them home for a meal. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was kind of nice, you know. Mm -hmm. And of course, we were, you know, you know, teenagers, you know, and these, some of these guys were young. We probably thought it was really wonderful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, some people say that the teen years are the hardest years uh, so, uh, since we're talking about them now and that was a couple years back for you and there are a lot of changes in expectations in those years did you think that was uh, true for you um, well I don't know during the war everything changed anyway and I mean things you didn't get, things you didn't have. Uh, I don't know, I mean, I suppose I moved up here at a good time. You know, I was halfway through high school. and So why was that a good time for you to move here? Well, because I was, I, I, I adapted, and I mean, I, there weren't many, there weren't many, you know, there, there was a lot of, a lot of the, the, the young fellows gone anyway in the service. I mean, you know, you just <laughs> may do what was around, I guess, I don't know. <laughs> I wasn't. I wasn't much of a dater, anyway. You, did you have many boyfriends before no. you met your husband? No. Uh -huh. No, I didn't really. I was waiting for the right one, I guess. Ah. <laughs> and so that's a good point to talk about the right one. Yes, that's and right. His name it was uh, was Cecil. Cecil. And uh -huh. we called him Butch. And Butch. Uh -huh. Terrible, yeah. terrible nickname, but that's what they gave him. So. How did you meet him? I met him. Go. Uh, I went to college in Worcester, and I took the bus from Hopkinton up there, and. Um, he came up from Marlboro, so he we met at the at the bus stop, <laughs> romantic spot, and we walked up to college together. Sometimes he brought a truck, gave me a ride up, and and then he got drafted the second when it was time to go to the second year, and he had to serve 18 months. Mm -hmm. So I wrote to him while I was gone, and then uh, when we came back, you know, we we started going together and got engaged. 
So where did where did he serve? He served in uh, Germany. He was in the um, oh what it, constabulary, I guess it was. They found they found homes for for uh, people, and he never saw any action. You know, the action was all over them. Thank goodness. <laughs> And I understand you were a famous letter writer. Oh yes, I yeah we corresponded, years. and he he used to write he used to write pages, and I mean he did nothing you know there's nothing to write about, but he he did pretty well, and I so I you know I tried to write a lot of information you know he he loved it you know mm -hmm. he he it filled the time he was he was really bored. <laughs> so in a way, it built your relationship. Yes, yeah, yeah, I think so. Writing those I think letters. so. Yes, yeah. Uh, you were creating a romance novel, perhaps. Oh well, well I wasn't pushing that much. But <laughs> sometimes you think you saw a little lipstick on the on the on the, uh, uh, the flap of the envelope or something, you know. And how did courting go when he returned? Well, he was still. So then he went back to college, so of course that was kind of uh, he couldn't come over every week. He lived in Marlboro, but we we saw each other on the weekends and everything, you know. So. Mm -hmm. Where would you go in those days for a oh, date? Oh, we'd go to the to the drive-in, or we'd go dance. There was a dance 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 place in Marlboro that we loved, and we went over there. We used to dance and what kind of dancing? Just just ballroom dancing, yeah. And uh, they'd have some name vans, which was great. We loved it, you know. And then we used to go to movies. I mean, that was about all there was to do, you know. Mm -hmm. Really, mm -hmm. not much else. Do you have a favorite all-time movie from? Way back then. Uh, no, but now. we no, but we had um, we had a favorite song, and it it didn't really it wasn't really uh, romantic or anything. But everywhere we went, it seemed they played it, and so he he used to hear it over in Germany. It used to get him thinking. And then, um, oh, what was the name? The Gypsy, it was called, and it was pretty. You know, I forget who made it popular, but it just it was funny. Every place we went, they played it. So. Uh -huh. That was our favorite song, The Gypsy. Like a sign, you know. To yeah, yeah. <laughs> Can you sing a bar, you know, one line of it? Oh, uh, in a faint caravan was the lady they called the Gypsy. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was pretty, you know. And it was all about she could see in your future and drive away all your fears. And I mean, it was nice, you know. Yeah, that sounds like an interesting <laughs> yeah. song. Uh, looking into your future. <laughs> so, and then um, after dating, you went on and got married. Yes, we got married uh, after he got out of college. Well, he got out in May, and we got, I think we got married in the next uh, September. Mm -hmm. So it was and all planned, you know. What did folks do when they had a wedding? Uh, well, we had, we had the wedding in the church uptown, and then we had the reception downstairs. Really, most people had their receptions downstairs in, in the church if they, you know, if they got married in church. And uh, we had a little band, and then we went on a honeymoon. That was it. That was it. Yeah. Where was that? We went uh, on a on a uh, trip up to uh, up on New York. You know, uh, oh, what do you call it? The, um, oh golly, I can't think of the. Niagara Falls. No, we didn't go. We didn't go that far out. We went up to the Cham Lake Champlain, and uh, there's a uh, there's a there's a uh, military thing up there, and I, I can't remember to tell you the truth, but yeah, we mostly drove around, you know, and came back home through Vermont. And uh, did you and your husband do a bit of traveling since that the honeymoon, through your years together? Oh yes, we've been to a lot of countries, um, you know, on trips. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have. We, we've been to Puerto Rico and we've been to American, American Virgin Islands and um, a couple of islands down there. Uh, I can't remember the names of them, but we went to uh, Denmark and um, we went to Mallorca, Spain, Mallorca. And we went to um, uh, Hawaii. I don't know, we've been quite a few places, mm -hmm. some of the islands, you know. What was your favorite trip? Oh, Hawaii. I'd love to go back to Hawaii. I remember with you also, you spoke of one of the most beautiful sights in your life. Oh, that was the, that was the Grand Canyon. The Grand Canyon. Yeah, I, I'll never, never, ever forget that. Never. That was awesome. I mean, it really was. That's what everyone says, and it, and it was, you know. What was it? 
about it? It's just looking down at all those, you know, those cliffs and there's a little teeny ribbon and that's the Colorado River. But it's just, it's, I mean, you just figure, how could that happen? I mean, it was, it was awesome. It really was. <laughs> And in addition to travel, you and your husband had a number of children. How many, yes. How many? Children? We had four children. We had three three girls. We had three boys and a girl. Mm -hmm. And uh, that kind of mixed me up because my mother had three girls and a boy, and it was very hard to, get, to find a girl somewhere. <laughs> yeah, but we did. We had a nice girl. And uh, two live in Hopkinton, the one boy and one girl, and one lives in Andover, and then the other one lives in Pennsylvania. So, you know, they're not too spread out. It's nice. Mm -hmm. And you have a number of grandchildren as yes, well. Yes, I have, I have ten grandchildren. And they're all on your wall? Mm -hmm. Yes, all of my wall. Yes, I have them all. All the, ones, all the ones that are out of college, one, two, three, the four, five, six. The six boys are all out of college. Mm -hmm. No, no, I'm sorry, Ben is still in college. And the girls are just, well, there's twins that are... 11 and one that's 16 and then there's a, a step-granddaughter that's first year of college. And you spend a good amount of time or stay in touch in different ways? Oh yeah, as, long, as, as much as I can, mm -hmm. yes, mm -hmm. yeah. I, yeah, I love to have them come. I think in um, talking with you it was apparent that family is a very large and important part of your yeah. life. Oh yes, yeah. Uh, in Even the one that, that moved away to Pennsylvania, I, I was heartbroken, but I mean, he comes up when he can. Says, he says, it's only six hours, Mom, but that's a long six hours to drive, you know. But they, I mean, every Christmas they've come, so I can't complain about that. And, and you know, they come during the year, you know. And two of the boys chose Boston for college, so they get up here for that, you know. Yeah, I, I have seen them. I can't complain. What do you think is one of the most important things in raising a family? Yeah. Oh, I think sticking together, you know. Uh, I don't know. I hope they, they stick together forever, but... Uh, Have you seen a change in that from earlier days growing up and the way uh, families are now? Oh, oh yeah, I think, I think children are much more independent now, and they, ha they have so much more, you know. They have cars earlier, and everything is 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 faster. I think. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. They, this, and even computers, and you know, the desktop. All of them have them. Well, they have to have them to go to college. I mean, it's awful. And the, you know, the cell phones, and you know, they just they have everything. <laughs> So do you think that is something that contributes to a sense of family? Or? Well, I, well, I don't know I, whether it contributes to a, a close family, but I think after they get in high school and they get out of school, they change anyway, you know, and you can keep, you can keep pretty good tabs on them when they're young, you know, you have to take them places. <laughs> so even though our civilization has changed, is there something that you think is important to hold on to when you are raising a family? Yes, I, I think you should, you should do things together. I mean, you know, as much as you can. And um, I don't know, just help one another, you know. I don't know. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and, and when we were talking, uh, you mentioned that one of the greatest challenges in life for you was when your husband passed away yes. later on in life. Yes, yeah. And, um, yeah, that is an awful time mm -hmm. for anybody. <laughs> and he was young and he was only 69. We were both 69. We had things planned, you know, trips we hadn't taken. And, but uh, uh, it, it was sudden, so it was very hard. And you mentioned getting through that time. And what did you find that helped you? In one of the hardest times of your life. Well, I mean, the, my my children were still, you know, they 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 helped. I mean, they they definitely helped. I mean, they they yeah. I didn't do anything special, you know, but I don't know. You just you never forget it, you know. You never forget it. It doesn't get easier. It just gets different, mm -hmm. you know. And Jenny, you also mentioned. Uh, the importance of friends. In your oh yes. Life. Oh yeah. Yeah. And friends are very important. Yep. Uh -huh. And um, yes, uh, friends are. You, you don't realize until you get older too. You know, 
and then they're older, they're your age, you know. You're getting together with friends yes. who are in their 90s still uh, at this point. Yeah. Oh, yes, yeah. Uh, I was wondering, what do you think makes a good friend? Well, I don't drive, so that makes it very hard for me. You know, I, I don't drive, and I, I, I should have learned, but I didn't. And um, But you, you can usually manage to get together somehow. You know, somebody will give you a ride or something, and, and there's some that are smart, and they still do drive. <laughs> Uh, but what is it about a person that, you know, you've had many years, many friends. What do you think makes someone a good friend um, to have in life? Uh, I, think if you, I think you have to have a couple of things in, in common, you know what I mean. Um, and like, you know, like to go, like the same things really, you know. And you, It's fun just to go out for a lunch, you know, mm -hmm. with a friend. Uh, do you get into trouble with a friend? Oh, they 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 accuse me of it, but I never I never do. No, my son just talked to me yesterday. Now, mom, be good. I says, what do you mean? I'm always good. <laughs> yeah, there were some stories I couldn't tell you, Cheryl, <laughs> but they weren't my fault, you know. <laughs> well, that's um, something that's come out in talking with you too about the great <laughs> sense of humor that you. <laughs> Yes, and, it's good I have it, uh -huh. believe me. And that your family <laughs> likes to joke with Yeah, oh yeah, they, yeah, they're also. all jokers. They are. My, my father was a joker, and uh -huh. my mother and father, and even, even my husband's father was a teaser. You know, he used to tease the, the, the kids when they were little, you know. So you have to get used to it. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know. Do you think humor is an important thing to have in, in life? Do I think what? Humor, laughing is an important thing to be able to do. In oh, life. I think you do. I mean, I, no, I'm not a, I don't know, I'm, I, I'm not perfect, of course. I tell the kids I am, but uh, I, I, you know, I just try, you have to accept some things. I mean, they're formal, they're, 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 they're formal, they're, they're, they're um, What's the word I want to say? I mean, there's no, there's no way out of them, you know what I mean? When someone dies, they, they, you know, you, you just have to accept it, you know, but they're final. <laughs> but, I don't know. They try to keep a good outlook. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, it certainly seems that way. Oh, well, that's and good. The stories you tell, and <laughs> I remember, I don't know what stories you want to tell and not tell on air, but... Uh, I know that you say uh, sometimes <laughs> you get yourself into some trouble. Yes, I do. Um, I do. I mean, I don't try, but I do. I and, mean, uh, it gets people laughing. It's I not. <laughs> it's not yes. getting you behind bars. No, 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 <laughs> not that kind. Not that kind. <laughs> uh, so, what what is uh, your hope for your own family? Well, I hope they all keep in touch with one another. That's what I hope, because that that will be nice, you know, I, and I mean, they they all have phones, they all have cell phones, <laughs> they all have the means to keep together, so I just hope, I mean, naturally, they do things you don't like, well, everyone does, I mean, you know, and, um, you know, you just have to overlook them, you know, I, I just hope they always, they always love one another. Mm -hmm. You talk about we're all human. We have to get. Yes, yes, that yeah, and, yes, yes. That's what I mean. They don't always agree about things. I mean, still love that's, and accept that's each other. That's life. That's right. That's life. And I remember you said you regret that you hadn't um, captured as many stories from your brothers and sisters about uh, your your family and ancestors. No, I, 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 I lot, there was a lot more I wanted. Now that I'm older, you don't realize that you're older. What's and, that? Uh, and I, there's a lot of more, a lot, a lot of questions I would have asked my sisters and you know my brother, but I, you know, it's too late. About your family. Yes. Yeah, so I mean, you should, if you want to know a history of your family, you should ask while they're alive and they're healthy and you know, say, do you remember when Mom did this or do you remember when Dad did that or something? I, I mean, I have a genealogy that my sister-in-law wrote, which is beautiful, and it's enough. Uh, for my grandson to be uh, really enmeshed in the in the uh, uh, civil law because that's I had a I had a um, I had a great 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 I think grandfather in it and and I I mean it's all it's all traced back to that so that really makes a big difference and he goes to Gettysburg College and he just loves he's got he's got the uniforms that he's all made that he's made you know and. 
he's in he's in uh, groups, you know, that do battles and. You and you have a great 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 grandfather who was in the Civil War. Yes, though, yes. Uh -huh. That's his soil up there. Right. It's not a. It, that's just a, a not a really. Um, the other sword my brother has, the nice one, that one, I mean, I, I still think it's nice, but I don't know. Really and I have a, I have a revolutionary hat, too, that my, my, my grandfather wore. So, I mean, it's very, very exciting, you know. Now your grandson is carrying on the ancestors. Yes, yeah, yeah, he loves his it. His ancestors. Yeah, he's, and, and we've been down to Gettysburg. We've seen where the Massachusetts Regiment was, and, you know, it's, it's just thrilling. It really is, you know. So what you're saying is it's important to try to gather as many stories as you can from yes, and, your family. and a lot of people, their, their re relatives have been in uh, World War II, you know, and it, I mean, I had one in one, and I was very lucky, and no, nobody else had to serve, you know, I had three boys, and none of them had to serve, thank goodness. Mm -hmm. Well, I remember that being one of your hopes for our future generation. Yes, I, I just hope there's no more wars, no more wars. <laughs> so no one has to fight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, I do. And what do you think is um, one of the most important things to live a happy life? You mean how to live it? Uh, oh, oh, gosh. Or one know. thing that is key or one or two things. It doesn't have to be that strict. Live a happy life. I don't know. I think you just have to bypass a lot of sad things and, and can you think of the happy things? I mean, I, you know. I, I mean, I think I'm basically happy, but I mean, you know, there's a lot of things you could dwell on if you did, you know, there's a lot of sad things. Mm -hmm. I don't say you never do, but <laughs> on the, I think on the whole, you just have to look at the, the good side. Mm -hmm. I really do. Which it seems you do. And yeah, you I try to. I really do. Laugh a lot and you oh, also yes, have yep. the love of your family. You yep. draw on. Yeah, I think so. And uh, I had noticed it was uh, as a symbol talking about your little rainbows. Oh, yes, Can you yes. Tell about them for a minute. There were, there were 30 here before you came. 30, 30 what? rainbows everywhere. And how do the rainbows come? They, I have, uh, I have um, uh, what do you call those things? Prisms. Prisms, 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 yes. I have prisms hanging in the window. Mm -hmm. And then, and then the sun gets here in the morning, and are they, they're every there. Well, there's a few now, but you know the shades down, and mm -hmm. that light is too bright. <laughs> so, uh, that's it. So you have rainbows with you. Yes. Yep. Day. Yep. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. I do. Mm -hmm. Yep. They're like a little bit. I, I love rainbows anyway. I, you know, I do. I love rainbows. Mm -hmm.